Yeah, those Twitter shares now down 8% on some concerns about user growth. But it is worth noting that Twitter did show some resilience to those very same factors that slammed Snap. First, the impact of Apple's operating system change. Twitter was insulated by the fact that 85% of its revenue is from brand ads, with a smaller percentage coming from the direct response ads that are more impacted by Apple's limits to ad targeting. Twitter is saying that the impact from the iOS space is modest, and they do see opportunity to improve the relevance of their ads. Now, that second issue was Snap warning about a pullback from advertisers impacted by supply chain constraints. Twitter did benefit from the fact that half of its ads are for digital goods or for services. Now, its user growth, though, fell short of estimates, raising concerns about potential market saturation, particularly here in the U.S., and revenue guidance was on the lower end of that expected range. That's weighing on the stock. It's now down over 8.5% this morning. Now, meanwhile, Spotify shares are surging this morning on better than expected revenue growth with podcasts helping grow ad revenue 75 percent in the quarter. Spotify CEO Daniel Ack saying that Apple's changes did not have a significant impact because of the service's strength in first party data. Because users log in to Spotify, they are able to understand who those users are. Now, no comment about any impact of those supply chain issues, saying that the biggest factor for the fourth quarter is going to be, once again, growth in the podcast industry. So really interesting here, guys, to see how these two companies are managing the same issues very differently than what we saw Snap deal with. Huh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of shining some light on the models, isn't it, Julia? It goes right back to what Adobe CEO Shantanu Narayan was telling us yesterday around the importance of first-party data, and he would argue tools like Adobe's that uh, help people get access to that first-party data content grow that relationship. That's sort of what Spotify has. But then at the same time, having that big chunk of Twitter's business in brand advertising, I mean, th that's not a good thing all the time, right? If you're not able to uh, yeah. target your advertising. I mean, am I reading that right? Yeah. Well, what's... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yes, first party data is always more valuable. You just have a better sense of who your customer is. You don't have to worry about tracking them when they're off your platform. But the first party data thing is one thing. To me, the brand advertising thing is really funny in a way because Twitter was really criticized for not having more exposure to direct response advertising. Direct response advertising was considered a key strength for Snap, for Facebook, for others. This is where Twitter wanted to be. So they were slowly growing their direct response business just at the time that Apple announced this operating system change. So in fact, something that was a weakness for Twitter, the lack of a direct response business, turned out to be a strength once Apple announced this change. And now Twitter does have an advantage, though, in that they can build out that direct response business with full knowledge of all of those Apple constraints, whereas Snap and Facebook have to retool their direct response businesses that they already had.